guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Bryn. Today uh, I have a video that is going to be a little bit difficult for me to film. Um, it's going to be very hard for me to share this with you guys, but I feel um, that I need to because uh, losing someone, sometimes you feel very alone, very isolated, and I know that I'm not alone, and I know that there's some of you out there that struggle with losing someone, and I, if I can share my story, maybe I can help you guys feel like you're not alone. So, um, you know, um, I'm not going to edit this video and it's just going to be real and raw and everything I want to share about my story losing my mom. So, um, bear with me. Um, I'm going to forget some things. Um, Exactly one year ago today, uh, January 23rd, 2021, I lost my mom. She passed away. And um, so it was a year ago. So, and it was a little bit hazy. <laughs> so if I forget something, I'm sorry if I I'm, want to say everything and I really don't want to forget anything, so I'll do my best. And if I get emotional, you know, forgive me, um, was my mom. And I'm just going to say that my mom was, me and my mom were very close. Um, we started out having kind of a rocky relationship. Um... But I would say the last five to ten years of her life, we got insanely close. She was my best friend. And um, my biggest fear in life is death. Um, myself dying or a loved one dying. Um... Specifically, I, the three most important main people in my life um, were my mom, my husband, and my cat. <laughs> um, so specifically losing one of those three people what has been my worst fear for like years now. And um, my worst fear came true. And, um, to say, like, some people say, like, oh, you know, if you experience your worst fear, you find out that it's not that scary. No, <laughs> it's very scary. And, um, the fact that it, maybe it's even more scary now because the fact that I lost my mom, um, I am terrified, terrified to lose my cat or my husband, um. So that's one thing that's been really difficult for me. Um, I just want to say I'm wearing this shirt um, because it is the last, um, the last time I saw my mom. I was wearing this shirt, and I remember specifically because when she was laying in the hospital bed, um, and I got to see her over zoom she saw my shirt and she um even though she was dying she complimented me on my shirt <laughs> so that's just the kind of woman she was um and I'm also here with her picture and um a stuffed animal that I gave her um so I have them here to help like comfort me I guess um so, as you read the title, um, you saw that my mom passed away from COVID. Um, but her story doesn't really start with COVID. <laughs> uh, 
Um, when I was about 14, um, my mom, let's start it even before then. Um, my father passed away when I was, um, 20. Um, but I never really had a relationship with my dad. Um, the last time I saw him was when I was like four years old. So, um, it was always, my family had always just been me, my two sisters, and my mom. Um, so when I was around, so just prefacing that, um, yes, uh, I'm pretty young and I am an orphan. I don't have any parents, so, um, you know, <laughs> there's that. But, so getting back to my mom, when I was about 14, um, my mom got really sick with something and that started her journey um, with illness. So she ended up getting arthritis, um, really, really bad arthritis, um, like almost debilitating. And she ended up actually um, having to quit working because of it. Um, her feet and her hands specifically got really messed up. Um, and my mom had always done like typing jobs, so she couldn't type anymore, obviously. Um, so she ended up leaving work and going on disability, um, which was really difficult for me um, and my family because you know, my mom was the solo person earning income for our family, so that was tough. Um, so I ended up getting a job when I was 14 to um, help support my family. But um, fast forward, she ended up about 10 years ago, she ended up getting um, developing COPD, uh, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease I believe um, and she got that from smoking she's been a smoker her whole life um, and then about three years ago she got a very um, serious she we found out that she had liver cancer um, which is pretty much fatal um, it's a very aggressive disease and at, when they discovered that she was given the news that she had about two years to live um, so and that was about three years ago um, four years ago now um, it was about three years before she died um, so she has struggled with some pretty serious conditions most of her life and um, So, you know, she's been in and out of the hospital a lot, and around, so Thanksgiving, I'll go to Thanksgiving, um, was the last, like, holiday I got to spend with her, and that was, you know, last year, um, well, in 2000, 2000, um, Thanksgiving was the last holiday that I spent with her. She was okay. Um, you know, she's always struggled with her health, so she seemed to be okay. Um, and then in December, she went downhill. She was really struggling. And, um, I came over one day. She lived alone. Um, but uh, she had like a helper person and I would come over there all the time. Um, and when, okay, backing up, when we, you know, when the whole COVID thing started, we were very scared for her because, you know, she had so many health conditions um, that I didn't really, um, I didn't want to go visit her a lot. I went shopping for her all the time. Like every week I would bring her food because we didn't want her to leave the house. She was afraid to leave the house. 
I was afraid to visit her. My worst fear was somehow if I got COVID and I gave it to her and she passed away, I would never ever forgive myself. I know that. Um, so I was afraid to visit her, but I was also afraid to not visit her because if she did pass away, then I wanted to spend as much time with her as I could. So COVID was very scary for us. Um, so in December, um, she, I went to visit her and I went into her house and discovered she was on the ground, not doing good at all. Like I was so scared. I, um, you know, rushed her to the hospital because, you know, I found her on the ground and she wasn't doing good at all. Um, so they admitted her to the hospital and she did not want to go to the hospital. We were afraid of the hospital because of COVID. Um, so I took her anyway. She needed to go, but she did not want to go. And she was angry at me because of it. Um, but I brought her into the waiting room and um, they told me I can stay with her until they take her back. Um, no one was allowed to go back with her, um, with anyone. So the last time I ever saw my mom in person was in that waiting room. And I tried to hug her goodbye because in the back of my mind, I knew that it might be the last time I ever saw her. Um, so I tried to give her a hug, but she was still angry at me for bringing her to the hospital. So she really didn't give me a big hug like I wanted. Um, but that was the last time I ever saw her in person. Um, so they took her back and they discovered that she had, um, developed a bed sore somehow, which is really strange because my mom like refused to sit down, even though she was in pain all the time. She was like, go, go, go. So it was very strange. Um, and it had developed a really bad infection. Um, so they needed to operate on her. And she didn't want to, but it would be a life-saving uh, surgery that she needed, but she did not want to. And my mom was never like that. She was always like, oh, I really don't want to, but I have to, you know, but this time she like refused the surgery. So a couple of days um, of back and forth deciding, we finally like kind of convinced her to get the surgery. Um, the surgery went well, uh, you know, it was kind of grave because she, I, you know, she was not doing good at all. Um, but the surgery went well and they, we all decided that she should go to a rehab facility, um, to recuperate from the surgery. Uh, she did not want to go. She was deathly afraid of catching COVID. Um, we all were, but she really needed to go to rehab. Um, you know, she couldn't, there's no way she could have gone back home. Um, and they didn't want her, they didn't want to keep her in the hospital because she didn't need to be there. So they sent her to rehab and a few days later, her blood pressure was dangerously low so they transferred her back to the hospital um and it was i think january 7th uh she told me that they tested her and she came back positive for covid um and immediately in my heart i just knew that we all knew if she got covid that she would um not survive it because she had COPD, she had cancer, you know, she was not, um, healthy enough. But I know that, you know, I also knew that my mom is a fighter and she has survived so much in her life. I mean, she survived this liver cancer 
for two for three years now when they said she wouldn't so I also had hope you know I I was praying a lot I prayed so hard I've never prayed so hard in my life um so after we found out she had COVID about a week later um for about a week she had no symptoms um and then her voice started getting really raspy. Uh, she was having trouble catching her breath. Um, and it got to the point where they decided to put her on a ventilator. Um, and they only put her on a ventilator for a day. And we thought that was amazing news. You know, they the doctors were like, uh, we think she's well enough to get off the ventilator, so we thought that was great. Um, they took her off the ventilator. I was able to talk to her for a little bit. I never really wanted to call her because um, she was struggling to breathe, so talking was very hard for her, but I also didn't want to not call her because I was scared that, you know, I would never talk to her again. So it, it was very touch and go. It was very tricky to know what was the right thing to do. Um, and throughout this whole time, there were signs everywhere at the hospital when I first took her to the hospital that um, you were not allowed to visit your loved one um, unless uh, you were like, they were a minor or they were, you knew they were going to die. So that was the only visitation. This entire time we were not allowed to visit her at all. Um, and then it got to the point where they were deciding to put her back on the ventilator or not. Um, which my mom did not want to do. So we basically, we tried to convince her to do it, but she did not want to do it. She was basically giving up at this point. And um, so it got to the point where I decided to ask the nurses if it was time to visit her. And we were all shocked when the nurse said, oh no, there's no visitation. Um they would not allow us to go say goodbye to my mom. Um, which now, I, I really hope that they have changed that policy because um, not getting to say goodbye to my mom um, before she passed away um, will probably traumatize me for the rest of my life. Um, just having her lay there in the hospital bed, and I know my mom was confused, and she, she thought that we would be able to say goodbye to her as well. We all thought that. It was a complete shock. Um, so her just laying there alone, I just know that she was confused and wondering where her family was, and, um, Honestly, I don't think I could ever get over that. Um, so, um, thankfully though, one of her nurses was amazing. She was just so wonderful. She um, pretty much forced my mom <laughs> to um, FaceTime me and my sisters. Um, so we got all, we got a moment where it was all four of us. Um, my mom didn't want to because she didn't want us to see her in the state that she was in. So she told the nurse no, but the nurse like convinced her to um, let us talk to her, um, and that was the last time. Um, and I think it was like the day before, maybe the day before she passed away. Um, so the day that she passed, um, 
for some reason that night I was so anxious I was just my heart was racing um, I just had this gut feeling that you know it was something bad was gonna happen so um, around midnight I think I was eating <laughs> dinner um we just had gotten some like fast food and I couldn't even eat it um I couldn't eat all day that's why we were eating at like midnight but I was trying to eat but I just I had my heart was racing I had this bad feeling um and then about an hour later we tried to go to bed and um I got woken up by a phone call from her nurse which was a different nurse and um, I will remember this phone call for the rest of my life. Um, the nurse that broke the news to me, um, he, he was not very nice. Um, he sounded almost like excited to tell me that my mom had died. And I will forever remember those words. That when he told me over the phone um, and it it's that's gonna scar me for life too I almost have like PTSD at when it gets late at night every every single night for the last year when it gets late at night I get the worst anxiety um, I think I do have PTSD um, from when I got that phone call um, I it's hard for me to fall asleep because it was late at night so that's when I get anxious at night um, so that is how my mom passed away and it was a year ago today um, and I still I feel still feel like I have not properly grieved um, my mom uh, I have just for the last year I have been like trying to keep myself busy and I think uh, you have my mom to thank for my YouTube channel because I wanted to just stay busy and I thought doing YouTube would be a good outlet for me to keep busy so I don't have to think about my mom and I don't have to um, grieve but um, some days I feel guilty that I'm not grieving uh, I feel like you know like I'm disrespecting my mom if I'm moving on with my life because how could I live without her you know but then other times like I feel bad for crying because you know it's been a year I should I feel like I sh everyone thinks I should just move on you know but um and I don't like to cry about my mom like in front of people that's for sure um like usually I'll cry like alone <laughs> but sometimes it just you know it just comes out and um and my husband has been amazing like I don't I, I don't like to cry in front of him but he when I do he's been so amazing and it sometimes I feel alone because he doesn't know what I'm going through he's never lost anyone like this um, so that's why sometimes I feel alone I know my sisters are going through the same thing but we all had different relationships to my mom you know so it's I feel like it's different and sometimes I feel alone but I know that I'm not alone and I know that my mom's with me always and um, I know that I'm st I still love spending time with her I still love talking to her all the time and um, she, I know that she's still with me. I see signs all the time that she's here. 
Um, but I, that's basically the story of me losing my mom and losing someone in, you know, general is so difficult and a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people say like, oh, well, you know, at least you knew that your mom was sick and that she didn't have a lot of time left and that probably made it easier, but it's never easy to lose your best friend, you know, somebody that means the world to you. It's not easy, even if you know that you don't have a lot of time with them, it doesn't make it any easier. And, um... If you guys are struggling with losing someone, just know that I'm here for you and I've been there. I know what it's like. I'm still figuring it out. There's no process to grieving. Um, everyone does it in their own way and it's okay to not know what to do or what to think or how to feel. It's okay. and. There's people out there that know what you're going through, so don't feel like you're alone. Um, but I just wanted to share the story of my mom, and um, my mom was the feistiest woman that I know. She did not take no for an answer. She... Um, was very feisty and <laughs> um, look at her picture I know um, she was very very stubborn and that's probably where I get my stubbornness from but um, she was the strongest woman I know she was in constant pain for half of her life but she never let it show she always um, you know took me to things she went to my cheerleading games all the time. She um, she always wanted to spend time with me. Uh, she got mad when I didn't spend enough time with her because <laughs> I was so busy with my life. And if I if you guys take one thing from this video, spend time with your loved ones. Give them a big hug. And always tell them you love them and if you're fighting with them forgive them because life is so short and one day you're gonna wish that you had spent time with them and um, just love each other <laughs> and that's it for today and um, Thank you for guys for being here and listening to my story. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully it's a happy one. <laughs> it will be. Um, but um, thank you guys. I love you guys. And I love you mom. Bye.